hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Jemima so this is a part two of the series answering que my anatomy question paper so in this series I'm trying to tell you how you should tailor your answers in whatever anatomy theory exam that you have trust me this is going to help you a whole lot so if that is what you're here for if you've not watched the part one please go and see the part one first so that you'd understand what exactly is going on here secondly if you've not watched my video on how to answer anatomy questions in exam please go and watch it too it's going to help you in this video so with that said let us continue with all the talk basal ganglia very important then number five said with well labial diagrams write short note on the histology of the following the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and the inner mucosa so this one they've told you with well labial diagram just keep like half page to draw good diagrams for them then um pseudo stratified columnar epithelium introduction you know what pseudo stratified why is it called pseudo stratified why is it called columnar where is it found the location where it's found what is its function where they are found okay clinical anatomy is not important at all there are some appendages that can be added to this epithelium like the cilia please if you can include it then inner mucosa to but inner mucosa, remember they're asking you for just the mucosa. And you know they are, the mucosa is made up of three different kinds of epithelium. To start from your introduction, where is the inner mucosa found? List the epithelium that are found there. What If you can draw the diagram to show the transition from one epithelium to the other, please draw that diagram. Then list the histological fact f features that you find in the inner mucosa and then you'll be good to go then arches of the foot number six said describe the arches of the foot and their applied anatomy this is not funny at all for how many marks okay 10 marks hmm? fair so you write your introduction you write your introduction then the types of arches of the foot you have the transverse arch you have the longitudinal arch even this transverse arch has types longitudinal arch has types you need to list each type draw the diagrams to show each type write about the write about the structures that support each of these types so writing about the support you're supposed to write the ligaments the bones <laughs> we'll be smarting but just try and write that then apart from the support you need to write about its summit its floor you know what 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 is the topmost part of that arch just like the medial longitudinal arch the talus is the summit of the arch so it is like the keystone of that arch so try and include the summit, the support, also the joints that are found in that arc. Hmm. It's smart. And then you write its characteristic feature, like what is its main characteristic, what is its main function. And after that, you put it all, you crown all of that with clinical anatomy. And you cannot write anything at of the foot without writing about flat foot and high act foot. So then if you have any other question, any other clinical anatomy you can add to beef up your your answers the next question was to write on the gross anatomy of the stomach this is just crazy you write the introduction you write the location you write the relations you write the borders you know you write the borders you write how it's slanting a bit you don't it, it's not straightforward you write the shape then you draw the diagram. If the diagram, you write the different parts, the fundus, the body, the cardiac, the pylorus. You just write the different parts, the lesser curvature, greater curvature. Write short notes on that, each of this stuff. Remember, they're supposed to be heading. So write one or two features of fundus. What makes this fundus? Okay, what makes that part called cardia? What makes this part called the body? What makes this part called the py pylorus? You know, the pylorus has a pyloric antrum. You just write all those stuff. And then you write that the stomach is a continuation of the esophagus and it continues into the duodenum. So these are just past things that make up the relations of the stomach. Include all those things, those headings. And then after that, you now write the blood supply, venous drainage, innervation, clinical anatomy and lymphatic drainage. All these things have diagram. There's diagram for blood supply. There's diagram for venous drainage. There's diagram for lymphatics. There's diagram for innervation. Clinical anatomy include all these things then um describe the anatomy of the pr prostate lobe of the lobes of the prostate you know this question is just straightforward because they have uh, they have told you what they expect of you so you just straightforward write the lobes 
you write the different lobes, draw the diagram if you can, and write the structure of the lobes, then they, they've given you headings, so no need to create your own heading. Just write the heading there for the man, for the person. And at a blood supply, if you can draw diagram, please do. Venous and lymphatic drainage. Remember, this is two in one, oh, so there are two headings. Write the venous drainage different, ri differently, write the lymphatic drainage differently, and draw diagrams if you can. Then clinical anatomy to write it as a heading differently. Then the next question said, describe the, the process of fertilization. <laughs> This question is wicked, cha. It's not funny. You know, fertilize you. This kind of, this is embryology, so you just write the different. Um, you just write introduction. What is fertilization? What's the usefulness of fertilization? Then you now start from stages of it. I don't know how you were taught, though. So it depends on how you were taught. The stages of the fertilization. Describe each of the stages. What happens in each stage? You now mention you now after listing all of that and describing all of that you now mention the results of fertilization list all the results s write one or two things under the results you now mention the clinical anatomy of fertilization very important like stuff like acrosome reaction now that's uh, uh, under one of the stages capacitation acrosome reaction those are all stuff under one of these stages of the fertilization there are diagrams for it try and draw these diagrams please then um, number 10 10a said mention the clinical abnormalities associated with mitosis and meiosis this one too is straightforward they just ask you to mention free five marks you just list them klein filter toner down blah 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 if you can write short short, short notes what what's what causes these syndromes what's the chromosome abnormality just list all of them and development of the lungs you know the lungs you put introduction it starts from so 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 date continue then you now draw diagram to show the different stages of development of the lung i actually use pcta pseudoglandular canalicular trabecular or the circular stage anyone that you want to call it and then the alveolar stage so I, all these things there are other it depends on what you were taught so there are other names for this but just make sure you list out these four stages then if you can remember the number of days from day this to day that for each of these stages please do and remember each stage has its diagram don't forget about that then um i think that was it okay so that that's it if there's anything i've forgotten i will certainly add it while editing this video the next series the next video i'm going to upload will be my physiology question paper so you would not want to miss that sit tight and watch bye